If you were to look at a map of all the different sacred places around the world, you would find that many of them are built along straight paths that sometimes circle the globe. Most scientists believe that these precise paths, called ley lines, are a striking but insignificant coincidence. Then there are others who believe that the placement of monuments along ley lines was a deliberate act by ancient mystics who could feel the Earth's secret energy. Imagine that the whole Earth is surrounded by a spider web of subtle energy currents. It can't be seen, felt, tasted, but the whole Earth is surrounded by these invisible force field lines. Those are ley lines. In 1921, photographer Alfred Watkins made a startling observation from atop a hill in Hertfordshire, England. The ancient mounds and monuments below him were perfectly aligned all the way to the horizon. Suddenly he had this image of fairy lines, he called them. When he saw cathedrals, churches, old stone monuments, wells that were on straight lines of alignment. And he began to say, well, look, if this is here and this is here, they line up. I wonder why. And out of that was born the idea that he called them ley lines. Most scientists scoff at ley lines, but the fact that sacred sites worldwide do line up along invisible paths does strike some as more than coincidence. People in earlier times and cultures were much more aware of these things than we are today. But intuitively, we are drawn like magnets to sacred places. People flock to places like Machu Picchu, Stonehenge, Avebury, Glastonbury, and they don't always know why. The electromagnetic fields that are there are actually stronger. They're sufficiently stronger that they elevate and change your brain waves, moving you into alpha and theta states that are associated with creativity and insight and spiritual revelation. James Swan is an author and naturalist who believes in the power and reality of invisible earth energy. He uses the ancient art of dowsing to detect and map ley lines. There's a couple of ways to detect ley lines. The first of which is animal behavior. Animals gravitate towards ley lines. They love them. Deer tracks, rabbit tracks, migration paths of birds, that sort of thing. The second is that they can be sensed and felt. It's not a clairvoyant sort of psychic thing. It's actually physically felt in your body. What dowsing does is simply to amplify that experience of the subtle difference in crossing through this invisible current of energy. After years of traveling the world, Swan and his colleagues are studying the power of ley lines in an urban setting. Seattle, Washington is the first city in modern history to map its ley lines. The project has been organized by the nonprofit Geo Group, which is attempting to bring the pulsing currents of Earth energy into the public consciousness. It's possible then if you begin to map out a city and you read the ley lines and you read the chi, it's possible to work with those things and incorporate them into design to begin to reduce violence and create a sense of creativity and spiritual inspiration within places. What we're proposing to do here is the exact same thing that was done all over the world by ancient people of every civilization. They found special places on the earth and then they used earth and stone to build places of power and sacredness for their culture, for their society. Geo Group President Chuck Pettis used dowsing rods to locate what he believes are all of the ley lines in the Seattle area. He then consulted with artist Mike Sweeney to create what looks, at first glance, like mass transit gone awry. It's a layout of the ley lines and the power centers in the Seattle area. The crystals indicate where the ley lines actually enter the earth, and that's where the power center is created. The goal is to enhance the overall energy within the city of Seattle to make Seattle a better place to live, a more spiritual place to live, a more healthy place to live. Spiritual monuments don't dot Seattle's ley lines, yet. If we were in Scotland, Ireland, England, many ancient places, this place that we are standing by would have a stone circle, it would have a standing stone, it would have a mound, it would be a special place. But the city of Seattle has only been here for 100 years. 
So this is a virgin power center. What we need to do is create a space here, put in a standing stone, a seating area to make this place special. So far, the GEO Group has a $5,000 city grant to begin to design what they hope will be the Stonehenge's of America. These power centers are special places on the body of the Earth. So by building beautiful artworks on these special places, we're healing the Earth. We're making the Earth more healthy, which creates a sense of world peace and harmony. The Seattle Ley Line project is ongoing, but two major obstacles are standing in the way. The organizers want to involve more artists and officials in other cities to expand the scope and influence of their Ley Line monuments. And as is the case with most public art programs, they need more funding.